Hello and welcome to South Asia Today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I'm your host, Shivangi Mishra. Let's begin with the headlines first. World rushes to adopt the India stack while UPI goes global. India donates first tranche of 20 kidney dialysis machines to Nepal. And no food, no electricity, massive protests erupt in Gilgit Baltistan. Let's begin the show. With an end to an indigenous digital surface solution, the India stack has not only garnered heaps of praise from all corners of the world, but has also compelled other nations to reach out to India in order to borrow the technology and emulate the model of application. Unique Identification and the Unified Payment Interface, or UPI, have particularly captured the world's attention. An increasing number of countries are looking to forge a digital alliance with India in order to provide a similar tech-driven, easy, safe and sustainable way of handling everyday services and operations that India has provided to her citizens. Join us as we take a closer look at how India has established herself as the global digital leader who is being looked to for support and solutions from all around the world. The Modular Open Source Identity Platform, or MOSEP, an open source foundational identity platform developed by the International Institute of Information Technology, Bengaluru, has partnered with the National Civil Registration Authority of the Western African country of Sierra Leone to develop a digital ID pilot project on the lines of India's Adar. As many as six nations, including Sri Lanka, Morocco, the Philippines, Guinea, Ethiopia, and the Togolese Republic are already using the platform. Apart from these countries, Tunisia, Samoa, Uganda, and Nigeria have also expressed their willingness to adopt the Indian model. India's successful digital journey, from creating Adar, a unique digital identity that is accepted all across the country, to creating a wider set of open APIs called IndiaStack, has ushered in a digital revolution around the globe. 80 million people in the world are now got their identity using MoSave. And we are working with, uh, as of today, 11 countries. Five of them are uh, rolling out nationwide program and six are evaluating it in large pilot programs. And eventually, if all these 11 uh, adopt and everybody in those countries get MOSIP, based identity, it will be close to 400 million people. So it's a very, very large project. India Stack is a collection of open APIs and public goods that aim to make identity, data, and payments easy and viable for all. The primary components of the India stack are a presenceless layer, a paperless layer, a faceless layer, and a consent layer. A successful example of India stack is that Indians completed over 8 billion UPI transactions to the tune of over 237 billion USD in January alone this year. India stack actually consists of many applications. You have Aadhaar, you have UPI, DigiLocker, Covin, number of them. Uh, it has been extremely successful in India. When the entire world was severely impacted by the economic headwinds caused by the COVID pandemic and exacerbated by disrupted supply chains, it was the India stack technology that assisted India in preventing a critical situation from spiraling out of control and saving its poorest citizens by sending them both money and material without delay. Even the most developed of countries struggled to deliver essential food and medical supplies to their citizens during those days. Witnessing India's success, many countries have not only applauded India's staff, but have also expressed interest in acquiring the system themselves. It works. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. 
there is a lot that we can learn one from another. Uh, uh, we are very impressed by what has been achieved in India with, uh, with the India stack and, uh, and uh, UPI. Digital Locker, another division of India Stack, provides Indians with a paperless platform to protect their documents in a government supervised locker. While India Stack was fundamentally created to benefit the citizens of India, the country, which runs on the core ideals of Vasudev Kutumbakam, the world is one family, never hesitated to share the technology with her global brethren. India Stack is no longer exclusively available in India. As it describes itself, India Stack is a collection of open APIs and a vision for the world. India has been generously assisting others in developing a similar platform for the social and financial inclusion of their citizens. Observers around the world believe that India will be the next digital leader. India has leveraged her ever-widening pool of tech-savvy talent to accomplish her ambitions. The world is counting on India to assist in achieving global digital goals, as well as paving the way for brand India to flourish further. Moving on, India handed over the first tranche of the 20 kidney dialysis machines to the Nepal government as part of its efforts to develop the health infrastructure in the Himalayan nation. During a ceremony in Kathmandu, Indian Ambassador Naveen Srivastava handed over the machines to Padam Giri, Nepal's Minister for Health and Population. Around 6,000 patients having renal failure have been taking free dialysis services throughout the country. Giri said India keeps up with its neighbours' first policy, which is beneficial for his country. On the request of the government of Nepal, the government of India handed over the first tranche of 20 kidney dialysis machines to Nepal. The government of Nepal had requested India for a total of 200 kidney dialysis machines as patients in Nepal had been longing for them for months. Indian ambassador to Nepal Naveen Srivastav handed over the first tranche of kidney dialysis machines to Nepal's Minister for Health and Population Padam Giri in a ceremony. <laughs> की गई थी भारत सरकार को और आज हमारे लिए ये अत्यंत प्रसन्नता की बात है कि इस 200 मशीन में से पहली जो खेप है 20 मशीनों की वह आज हम हस्तांतरण कर पा रहे हैं बाकी बची हुई मशीनें भी अगले कुछ दिनों में हस्तांतरण हो पाएंगी ये हमारी उम्मीद है हमारी उम्मीद ये भी है कि ये मशीनें नेपाल सरकार का जो स्वास्थ्य का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है या पूर्वाधार है उसको और बढ़ाने में मदद करेंगी भारत ना सिर्फ एक चिमे की मित्र है पर एक ट्रस्टेड डेवलपमेंटल पार्टनर है नेपाल का भारत और नेपाल डेवलपमेंट के कई क्षेत्रों में साथ-साथ मिलकर काम करते हैं इसमें से स्वास्थ्य का क्षेत्र सबसे महत्वपूर्ण है the government of Nepal started Biparna Nagarik Kosh after the 2006 People's Movement to provide financial relief to people suffering from serious ailments that are too expensive for treatment. Cancer, renal failure, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, head and spinal injury, sickle cell anemia and stroke are covered under this program. But due to the lack of enough dialysis machines, patients are compelled to wait for weeks and months to get a round of dialysis. The government of Nepal has allocated over 2 billion Nepalese currency to NRS, Nepal Realistic Solution, for the treatment of 8 serious ailments out of the total amount allocated for the treatment of 8 diseases. Over 52% is spent on kidney disease. Apart from free dialysis services, the Health Ministry provides financial assistance for transplantation and medication. Today, I am very happy to be here. The Bharat Sarkar, the Bharat Yajanta, the dialysis machine has been working on the dialysis machine. The dialysis machine has been working on the dialysis Bharat Sarkar, Singh, Bharati Janta, Allah, Mahardik, Dhanibad, Dina, Sahan, Shoo. 
The Nepali minister also remarked that India's neighborhood first policy had left a remarkable impact on the people of Nepal. Over 50 hospitals, nursing homes and dialysis centers run by non-governmental organizations throughout the country have signed agreements with the health ministry to provide free services. Now we take a look at some happenings in Asia in a segment called Asia Watch. The United Arab Emirates UAE will explore all partnership opportunities with India to help the South Asian countries' growth and low-carbon plans, the UAE's climate envoy and designated president of COP28, Sultan Al Zaber, said this week. The UAE, a major OPEC oil exporter, is hosting the COP28 climate summit this year, scheduled to take place in Dubai between November 30 and December 12. It will be the second Arab state to do so after Egypt in 2022. The conference will be the first global assessment of progress since the landmark Paris Agreement in 2015 to limit global warming. Scientists say the Paris Agreement commits countries to limit the global average temperature rise to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and to aim for 1.5 degrees Celsius a level which, if crossed, could unleash far more severe climate change effects. As COP28 President, Zaber will help shape the conference agenda and intergovernmental negotiations. He also heads the UAE's state oil giant Adnoc and his appointment has fueled activist concerns that big industry is hijacking the world's response to the global warming crisis. A group of artists from Basra's Al Ghadir Studio for Fine Arts spent their weekends painting their depictions of the earthquake that hit Syria and Turkey, showing what the tragedy has left in its wake. Visitors of the exhibition, which was set up along Basra's Al Farahidi Cultural Street, watched the artists as they drew or painted scenes from the quake they watched or imagined, highlighting the loss that many have experienced. Artists drew paintings showing how the quake impacted millions where some lost their homes, families and loved ones, with many still trapped under the rubble. The combined death toll in Turkey and Syria stands at more than 46,000 people and many people are still believed missing. Washoku, a traditional dietary culture in Japanese, is also registered as a UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage. A number of seasonal dishes are prepared using Japanese ingredients, which is a tradition among artisan chefs. A training program is being conducted at a Washoku restaurant in Kyoto with the support of Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries of Japan to develop foreign human resources. This year, 12 chefs trained for 10 days. The project director, Yoshiko Murata, also made an upbeat address. At the training report presentation, each chef announced what they experienced during the training. These young chefs know the complexity and flavors of Japanese ingredients and these training programs will help promote Washoku all over the world. A furniture exhibition was recently held in Tokyo, Japan. A variety of inbound conscious products are introduced at the exhibition. Fukui Prefecture in Japan is famous for its wood and timber. Inside this trailer is a special theatre room made of wood. As this space is well designed and made of wood, it gives a sense of warmth to the visitors along with high quality sound. One of the attractions of inbound is Japanese bathing culture. Sona is originated in Northern Europe. It is now popular in Japan and the Sona business is developed. Most of barrel-shaped Sona is imported. A wood company in Tokyo has entered the Sona business. This Sona facility is characterized by all Japan, made of Japanese materials, design and technology. The ability to adapt to outdoor life and nature is now being prioritized. It is a resort-style facility with a dome-shaped tent and bungalow on a vast natural site. With the help of some unique ideas that accumulated during COVID-19, Japan is providing more comfort and a new experience to foreign tourists. 
The people in the illegally occupied territory of Gilgit Baltistan have taken to the streets as they face acute shortage of food grains and constant load shedding. The residents complain that the Pakistan authorities are apathetic to the affairs of Gilgit Baltistan, making their lives a living hell. People in Pakistan occupied Kashmir Gilgit Baltistan are out on streets protesting against the current regime. Battered and withered residents are witnessing the worst period of their lifetimes. With no electricity and no food, populace of Gilgit Baltistan has been deprived of even the basic needs. Residents complain that their area is not receiving electric power supply ever since it was recognized as a new subdivision. <laughs> कि हमारा बिजली आज ही से गुब्बस के लिए जो दे रहे हैं वो तारे उठाए बिल्कुल बिल्कुल वो इसलिए हम गुब्बस वालों को लिए बिजली दे रहे थे कि जिस वक्त हमारा सब डिवीजन एक था इसीलिए हमने उनको बिजली दिया था कि हमारे जो एक्शन वहां बैठा था एसी वहां बैठा था आरी वहां बैठा आज मेरा सब डिवीजन अलग हुआ है तो मेरा बिजली भी अलग हर साथ हमारे बुजुर्गों के साथ ये मिसाक बंद करो हमारा बिजली चरण घर का कोष तक जा रहा है क्या मजाक है ये दे रहे हैं गुब्बस वाले या चरण घर वाले आपको बिजली नहीं दे रहे आज हम तब यहाँ से उठेंगे जब हमारे मसला हल होगा ये मजाक The residents are also facing an acute shortage of wheat, an elementary source of food, they say. The wheat is being smuggled to different areas and they do not receive their fair share of food grains. China pool वहां से गंदुम स्मगलिंग के लिए वहां अपलोड किया जाता है और झुंडरो फील्ड के लिए ले जा रहे हैं सबूत है कल ही एक बंदे ने कहा कि वहां से वो ट्रैक्टर में डाल के झुंडरो फील्ड ले गए क्यों कर रहे हैं ये हमारे साथ लिहाजा इस पुल में कोई अपलोडिंग नहीं होगा सिचुएशन इन गिलगित बल्तिस्तान हैज नेवर बीन फेवरेबल फॉर इट्स इंडिजिनस पीपल under Pakistan's illegal regime and the current economic crisis in Pakistan has further intensified their concerns. Mahashivratri is a Hindu festival which is dedicated to Lord Shiva. While there are a number of legends associated with the festival, the most popular states that Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati got married on this day. The festival is celebrated with great religious fervor all around the country. Let's take a look at how different regions in India celebrated the grand festival this year. Shiva temples decked up in colorful lights with devotees crowding around them to offer milk, flowers and leaves to shivalings marks the auspicious occasion of Mahashivratri. Observed on the new moon day in the month of Magh of the Hindu calendar, the festival is celebrated in the honor of Hindu god Shiva and marks a remembrance of overcoming darkness and ignorance in life and the world. Devotees also observe a full day fast on Mahashivratri, which is kept not only to attain Shiva's blessings, but is also a test of one's own determination. Like every year, this time too, the festival was observed with great faith and color all around the country. In New Delhi, devotees arrived in large numbers at the famous Jhandewalan temple to offer prayers to their Lord. लेकिन पुराणों में यह भी वर्णन है कि भगवान शिव जो है अदृश्य थे लेकिन आज के दिन भगवान शिव लिंग के रूप में इस भूधरा पे प्रकट हुए थे इसलिए शिवरात्रि का भी विशेष महत्व है तो आज का दिन भगवान शिव को समर्पित है सिमिलर सीन्स वर विटनेस्ड इन मध्य प्रदेश वेयर प्रीस्ट एट उज्जैन महाकाल टेंपल परफॉर्म द फेमस भस्म आरती ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ महाशिवरात्रि 
Following the traditional rituals, priests were also seen offering milk and honey to Shivling. बाबा से प्रार्थना की थी तो आज उनका अविस्मरणीय इतना अति सुंदर रूप देखा गया है जैसे महाकाल कहा जाता है कालों के काल महाकाल काल उसका क्या करे जो भक्त हो महाकाल का In the southern city of Tiruvananthapuram a giant idol of Lord Shiva and goddess Ganga was installed people were seen clicking pictures of the idol Meanwhile in the religious capital of India Varanasi devotees celebrated the festival with much calmness and mysticism Devotees strung the shores of river Ganga to bathe in the holy waters and performed Shiv puja on the ghats दुनिया की सबसे खूबसूरत जोड़ी शिव और पार्वती की पार्वती मैया की तो ये आज हमारे बाबा की शादी है विवाह है और शिव का मतलब सब में सत्य है वही शिव है और एक दिव्य स्वरूप जो काशी में मिलता है एक दूसरे से प्रेम मिलता है और हर हर महादेव का नारा हर जगह गूंजता है शिवरात्रि सेलिब्रेशन इन रामेश्वरम सिटी ऑफ तमिलनाडु वर फुल ऑफ कलर एनर्जी एंड सील Devotees throng the Ramanatha Swami temple to mark the occasion by taking out a chariot procession with a Shiva statue on a pedestal. As Rameshwaram house is one of the 12 Jyotirlingas, a pool of devotees throng the Ramnath Swami temple all day to offer prayers to the deity. Devotees believe that whatever one wishes for and prays for with devotion on this day, that wish is fulfilled. On this day, devotees mark the festivities by consuming drinks and sweets. Unna idalam naam shivaratri punya galam. Ipoze naalu tu anjare. Bhama mohar tamana dinner thire shivaratri the thoranga vendam. Ramayya shuru mohalana punya tirtha ngali neeradi. Andha shivaratri the thoranga vendam. Kere vile naangi galangal. मुख्यमेश्वर भक्त In India, twelve Shivratris are observed in a year, out of which Maha Shivratri is considered the most auspicious. According to legends, on this night, Lord Shiva performs the cosmic dance of creation, preservation, and destruction, also known as Tandav. It's time for me to wrap up today's episode. We'll be back next week at the same time. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of South Asia Today. Goodbye and take care.